Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today we have a somewhat controversial video titled How to fake an income statement in Power BI. Now from the title of this video or having heard the title of this video, you're probably asking yourself, hmm, why does he need to fake an income statement in Power BI? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Unfortunately, you cannot create a good income statement in Power BI. If you have created income statements for your CFO or board of directors using Excel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, the best we can do in Power BI is fake it. We can make it look like it's, a, it's an income statement. We can make it appear to look like an income statement, but in reality, it's a far cry compared to what we're used to in Excel. Be it as it may, we have to be able to solve that issue and be able to create an income statement in Power BI. So here in this video, I will talk about one of the ways to do it. There are several ways to do it, and I might do another one soon on some other approaches you might take to format your report to look like a legit income statement. So here uh, in this video, we will talk about one of those approaches. However, this is a poor approximation of what some of us have done in Excel. Therefore, I'm gonna be calling it a fake. Okay, why is it so difficult to build an income statement in Power BI? Well, there are several things that are expected in an income statement, so let's go through those requirements. Number one is we're mixing and matching a lot of different types of metrics in the same visual. So here we start our income statement with units. You might call them cases or some kind of volume. Usually that'll be at the top of the income statement. Then we're gonna go through the PNL items. And what we're doing sometimes is we need to do things like gross revenue. And then underneath we wanna uh, step indent a little bit and um, show some of the buckets within gross revenue that then will net out to net revenue. So we need to be able to indent our line items on the income statement. The other thing that we need to be able to do is we need to be able to mix and match whole dollars with numbers with percent. And all of that has to be formatted neatly. And every now and then we need to have an underline or some sort of separator, line separator to separate different buckets on the PNL or an income statement. Unfortunately, even though it makes perfect sense and that's being done by thousands or hundreds of thousands, if not millions of companies in the world on a daily basis, building such a report in the Power BI is a major pain. So in this video, I will show you how that's done and uh, hopefully you can you guys can understand some of the challenges that we're trying to solve so let's take a look at how this report is done so if i click on this visual you guys will see that this is a matrix control and um, it takes only three elements to create it so we have a pnl or income statement category and a line item that goes into rows and then in the values i have a variable called income statement amount on the surface, it looks pretty simple. However, it's not unfortunately quite as simple as we want it to be. By the way, I will make all of the materials used in this video available on my blog. So uh, go ahead and look for the link in the description of this video. That will take you to the blog. And in the blog, there will be a link to a zip file that will contain this Power BI desktop. And you can download it and, and uh, follow along and kind of reverse engineer what I did to make this report work. The first thing that you wanna do is you want to create a table that will have a general structure of your income statement. So the table uh, is fairly easy to set up. We have two columns, category and a line item. And the way that's done is a category, if it doesn't have children, the same line is repeated in the line item, but where it does have children, so for example, we want to indent for gross revenue and we want to show discount, discounts and allowances, percent of gross revenue and returns. We want them to show as children of gross revenue. And we want to do, and we also want to do a very similar thing for operating expenses. So for operating expenses, we want to see SGNA, percent of revenue, and other. So if we don't have any children, then category and line item will be the same. If we do want to have children that are indented, what we do is the first time this metric shows up, gross revenue. There's nothing that goes into line item. And then we repeat gross revenue or that metric as many times as as many children it has. Then what you could see is that I use this separator lines 
And uh, here I use a different character. I, I just use it arbitrarily. I just want to show you that you can mix and match different characters uh, that you can find in the character map to figure out uh, how to build your separators between different buckets on your PNL. So then once you have that structure set up, I have here a very simple income statement with uh, 16 buckets. The next thing that you want to do is you want to create a sort column for all of those category and line items. So what you do is I want units to go first. So category sort one, gross revenue to go second, two, and you see two is the same for all of the gross revenues. Net revenue, I want it to go third, cost of goods sold fourth, a separator will go fifth. Now I'm cheating here a little bit because each of these separators have different lengths. That allows me to give it a different ID because if you want to use the same length for all of the separators, then you would not be able to give it a different ID, which will then mess up your sort order. So here I'm cheating just a little bit to make sure that I can have that separator in the proper place and I specify a sort order for each of the separators. And then I do the same for the line item. Again, each unique value in a line item gets its own ID here where I do not specify a value, which means uh, it has children. And the very first time I specify it, it's listed on my, on my category, then I don't give it a line item. Uh, it's a little bit probably complicated to follow, but if you download the file, you could look at it. If you've seen income statements, this should make pretty, pretty good sense to you. So make sure that you have a structure of your income statement in the first two columns with uh, categories and subcategories. And then a category sort for all of the unique values on category and line item sort for all of the unique values for line item and make sure that those categories that have children, the very first time they show up, they should be empty. Now what I want to do is to show you what happens when you drag those two columns into an empty matrix control. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to bring the category into rows and you see because it's sorted, one of the things that we do is once you load that data into Power BI, in my case, I just went to home, enter data, and I just uh, pasted that income statement structure right into Power BI. And then what you want to do is you want to go to click on category and go to column tools and make sure that you sort it by category sort. So you want to sort category by category sort, and you want to sort line item by line item sort. This way you'll make sure that everything in your income statement in your income statement comes in the proper order. Okay, so once I drag my category, you see that I have a neatly laid out income statement, but it does not have the children in it yet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag line item under the category, and now you see that we have this plus signs. So I'm gonna click on gross revenue and operating income. Those are the two different pieces. Um, sorry, it was operating expenses. Those are the two buckets where I do want to see the children and everything else uh, will have no children. So I don't want to uh, click on the plus sign there. Now, all I need to do is go to the row headers and then uncheck my plus minus. And now I have my income statement pretty much well laid out. And I just need to deal with these blanks, which I will address in a few seconds. The next step is you need to build a smart measure that will allow an income statement to be painted properly and all the numbers to be formatted either as whole numbers for units, dollars for all of the financial metrics and percent for all of the ratios. So let me just go ahead and drag that into my values for now. So you see the minute I did that, everything got expand, expanded out. So what you could do is you could just right click, say collapse all. And then you could just right click and say expense selection then expense selection on operating expenses to get us back to where we want to be. So now we have a, an income statement that we want it to be. So we see that the blanks disappeared and it's pretty much well laid out uh, minus a couple of issues. So there's a couple of formatting things you could do to make it look like an income statement to the left. For example, one of the things you could do is go to style and say none if you don't want to see the alternated color and then I don't want to see the total here so I'm going to go to grand total and hide it make it white and then also apply it to labels and then I don't want to see my row headers so I'm just going to hide those or column headers I'm going to make them white as well 
And now our income statement that we just created looks very similar to the one I had created originally. So while the table that I had to create to help me with the structure of income statement probably seems pretty easy, all it is is just listing all of the categories and line item and giving them a unique sort item, sort ID. The measure that I use to help me with this is actually very simple, but it's a little bit more compl a little bit more involved. So let's go through that measure now. Before we jump to the measure though, I just wanna make sure that what you guys have is you will need to make sure that you have a measure for every single bucket on this PNL. So we talked about this PNL having something like 20 different line items or buckets. That means that you have to have a measure for all of this. You need to have a measure for units, gross revenue, discount now allowances, percent of gross revenue. All of the ones where you see a number, all of those come from a dedicated measure. And what I've done, I've created those measures and put them in the PNL folder. So here you see cost of goods sold, discount and now allowances as percent of gross revenue, finance costs, gross margin, profit, and so forth. All of the buckets on my PNL have a measure created. So in my case, my PNL is not particularly long, so I had to create something like 20 measures or so. Uh, it's a little bit annoying. So here, when you download this, I just hard coded those values. So in your case, you will have a uh, GL table or something that has all of the information to create this measure. So you'll have to recreate it on your specific model. In my case, how I create net income is irrelevant or how you know how I create the gross revenue is relevant. So I just hard coded those values, basically just to make sure that we have some sort of uh, normal flow to our PNL. Now that we have all, all of our measures created, uh, I've done a couple other things. Auxiliary, I created a couple of auxiliary calculations. So because we will be formatting everything as whole numbers, dollars or percent, I've created a measure that returns that format to me. And I will show you a little bit later how that works. So. Um, this format percent, I can use this format if I need to format something as a percent, then this is my format USD and this is my format number. So I just created these three measures and now I can use them every time where I need to format something as, an, as a number or whole or dollar or percent. Okay, now we're looking at a what I call a smart calc, but you're probably looking at this going, oh my God, do I really have to write 32 lines of code for this? Uh, it looks involved, in reality it's actually very simple. So let me walk you through this and explain you how this works. So what we're doing is we're gonna return this variable, this measure that we're creating, income statement amount. And the way this will work is we're gonna take a look at what category we're filtering for. And then for each category where it has children, we're gonna look into the line items within that category. So we're gonna read in which category has been selected, which one. And if the category selected was units, then we're just gonna return our units measure, but we're gonna format it as whole number. If our category is gross revenue, then what we need to do is we will we potentially need to show the children. So now we're gonna see, say, do we have a single value in a line item? And if we do, what is it? If it's discount and allowances, then go ahead and return discount and allowances measure and format it as USD. If it says gross percent of revenue, percent of gross revenue, then return percent of gross revenue and format it as percent. If we're looking at returns, so those are all of the buckets that we wanna show indented underneath of gross revenue. We're gonna re format return and re return it as, format it as US dollars. And then here we're saying that if there is not a single value, so that means when it's shown as a total, then show me the gross revenue. So that will show, that'll show the gross revenue right here. That's this line. So when you're looking at gross revenue, because it has three children, then it doesn't have a single value in a line item, then it's gonna just return the gross revenue here. So as you can see, it doesn't sum these values up. For every line item in this income statement, it looks up a specific measure that makes sense. Now we're just gonna walk through the rest of the PNL. If we're, if we're on the net revenue row, return net revenue, and then we do the same thing for operating expenses. And every time we do this, we just wanna make sure that we format everything uh, based on whichever format makes sense for this line item. If we're doing as percent of gross revenue, it'll be percent. If it's a financial measure, it's gonna be a US dollar. 
And if it's a value measure, cases, units, we're going to return it as a whole number, which is somewhere here, right here. So the only thing left is what do we return when we have a separator? So when we read in a separator, all we need to do is return an empty string. So we do this three times in our case. First time for this one, second one for this one, and third time is this one. And you could go to character map and find any character that, that will either give you a line or some sort of square or re rectangle or something that you know makes sense to you as a separator between different buckets on your PNL. So what happens when you publish this to powerbi.com? It works just fine. In fact, you can even print it. So I printed it here as a PDF document. So here's a PDF of that report. And you can see that this looks like a um, normal income statement. And then I also import that, export that at PowerPoint. And here's the PowerPoint deck with our report. And you could see the background and the income statement embedded in the in the deck. To summarize, we've just uh, gone through the steps necessary to fake an income statement in Power BI. I think we need to have a much more sophisticated and a user-friendly way to create a report with income statement required functionality. Unfortunately, today that's simply impossible. And anybody who said that they've done it, I don't believe so. I mean, we've all faked it. We've done it in many different ways. This is one way to do this. I will be doing another way of doing it, uh, maybe in a couple of days. We've all found a way to mimic the income statement behavior that we have in Excel, but we have not found a way to build an income statement that a CFO of an organization will love. So they will accept it, they will tolerate it, they will not love it. But unfortunately, this is the best we can do right now. So hope you found this uh, video informative. Now that uh, I've shown you how to fake it. I'm not proud of this because this is not perfect and I have a pretty high standard for the kind of work that I would want to be able to deliver using Power BI, the tool that I love. But this is the best we can do, as I said before. So you can find all of this materials on my blog. The link will be in description. Hope you found this to be interesting and informative. And I'm looking forward to see you back very soon. Thank you and bye.